Well, hello there. It's good to be back. I haven't done a video in a while. This week we're going to be doing something a little bit different. And that instead of focusing on just one painting, we're actually going to look at three different paintings which were sort of um, derived or inspired by one another in some way, shape, or form. And we're going to begin with this painting from 1538. This is entitled Venus de Urbino, or the Venus of Urbino, by the Italian master Titian. Uh, not Titan, as I used to say. Then let's just briefly kind of analyze this painting, and then we'll we'll talk about some of the other paintings that, as I said, were inspired by this piece. The woman depicted in the painting is, of course, Venus. Art critics typically comment on the frankness of her expression. She stares straight at the viewer. She's unapologetic. She's completely unabashed by her nudity. And, of course, these things were considered revolutionary at the time, as many famous paintings were. One interesting uh, piece of symbolism, symbolism excuse me, is the dog on the foot of the bed. And the dog is considered a symbol of fidelity, right? And you probably already knew that, man's best friend, you know, the faithful companion. Well, the fact that this dog is asleep suggests a lack of fidelity or that the woman is, who's being portrayed, Venus, is in fact unfaithful, which kind of, um, kind of adds to the scandalous nature of this painting, obviously beyond just the nudity. The maids in the background are rummaging through a chest, um, ostensibly in search of Venus's clothes. And another thing worth mentioning is, is the setting here is a, a Renaissance palace. And Titian really contrasted the straight lines of the architecture with the smooth curves of Venus. And typically, when we look at women in paintings, art critics always want to talk about the smooth curves and uh, how it's kind of almost indicative of like a landscape, hilly landscapes, right? Um, remind us of women, supposedly. So says Freud. Now the next painting was not exactly um, derived necessarily from Titian's, um, but this was painted in 1814 by Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres, the French neoclassicist, and this is entitled La Grande Adelesque. Um, well, an Adelesque, first of all, if you don't know, is similar to a concubine, and that this, these, they were women, they were female slaves that were really just meant to satisfy the carnal desires of the sultan in the Ottoman Empire. And while I said that Angra was a neoclassicist painter, this uh, particular piece kind of marks um, a shift from his neoclassicist works to more of the uh, romanticism components that we would see in Angra's later works. Now, one thing that is frequently commented on in this painting is the elongated proportions, so there's a lack of anatomical realism. And supposedly, and I'm not exactly sure how, um, how you might go about doing this, but if you measure the proportions of the woman depicted in the painting and compare those proportions um, with those of an average female human, the woman depicted in the painting has about five vertebrae too many, and her pelvis is twisted into an impossible position. So, why did Angra do this? Was he just, was he making a mistake? Well, maybe. <laughs> or, the more artistically uh, intellectual argument would be that he's trying to distance the woman's head significantly from her pelvis, perhaps trying to indicate a woman's depth and complexity of thought beyond her obvious sexual role in society, particularly as a concubine. And her gaze in this painting is considered especially uh, psychologically complex as well. Now, this painting was actually directly inspired by Titian's Venus de Urbino, and this is Olympia, painted by the French Impressionist Manet in 1863. And once again, the gaze is the first thing that art critics always want to talk about. It's very confrontational. It's even bolder than Venus's um, particular gaze or visage in the Titian, the, uh, the Titian painting. And what she's being depicted here, this isn't a goddess, Venus. This is a prostitute, a high-class prostitute, um, and we can tell that she's high-class by some of the features of wealth that she's wearing. She's got an orchid in her hair, um, she's wearing a bracelet, pearl earrings, and a oriental shawl, which would have been very costly. And um, presumably she's sitting in a room waiting for a client. And as I said, you know, the Titian, the, uh, the Venus de Urbino, shocked viewers uh, by kind of the frankness and the um, explicitness of the painting at the time, but Olympia is markedly more voluptuous in tone. That black ribbon tied around her neck and the fact that the kind of the delicately casted off slipper adds to the uh, kind of 
kernel theme that we see in this painting, and it added to the controversy of this painting as well. Notice also that the dog at the foot of Venus's bed in Venus de Urbino has been replaced by a cat, and a cat was a symbol of prostitution. I didn't know that until I uh, read about this painting. And also notice the, the black maid uh, behind the woman is carrying flowers, and uh, the prostitute, the woman, is ignoring the flowers presented by her maid, um, probably a gift from a client. So what was the point of this? Um, I don't know. <laughs> These are three paintings that I had uh, done before. Um, if you're not friends with me on Facebook, though, you wouldn't have known about them. This was before Painting of the Week went to YouTube. Just wanted you to see how artists kind of draw inspiration from one another and borrow from the same themes and modify uh, paintings to their own liking. So, hope everyone has a great week. Remember, if you want to increase your appreciation for art, which you should because art is so cool, be sure to subscribe so that you can catch my new video every week, and there actually will be a new video every week now, I promise. See you later, everyone. Thanks for watching.